Hi everyone, it's Chukuma from Mastermind Automobile Solutions. Today we want to talk about making the switch from petrol cars. You know, you may want to make the switch from the regular internal combustion engines which run on petrol. The options you have are mostly three cars, either the CNG, the electric cars, or the hybrid vehicles. We want to talk about the three, the positives and negatives of all three, and which one we think you should opt ultimately choose at this point in time, especially in Nigeria. Kindly like our video, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment. Thank you. So you want to make a switch to buy fuel don't tire you. You're spending too much on fuel. So you're considering what should you switch to? There's the CNG, which the government is really pushing for. They've even established areas or you know places that you can do the conversion in your vehicle there is also the electric cars which our own indigenous company the innocent vehicle company has rolled out you know very recently and then we have the hybrids that have been with us which have been perfected specifically by some brands so within these three you would make an option if you want to switch from petrol now don't forget that the hybrid would still use petrol but it's running on batteries which works with the petrol and your normal internal combustion engine to give you you know the power and make you spend less on fuel so we are looking at these three and um, we are going to help you choose so kindly stay tuned you might learn a thing or two you might also be able to choose which one is best for you after this video the first on the list is the cng now almost everybody in nigeria must have heard about cng the compressed natural gas which the government is pushing, which is gaining prominence. Now, what's happening really is um, people doing the conversions, moving from the petrol to the CNG. So with your regular car, you can get it converted to the CNG. So it's now going to run on this compressed natural gas instead of your petrol, because you're going to make some adjustments to accommodate the CNG. So what are the positives of using this CNG? First off, you're going to spend less on petrol. So the petrol is about 1,000 Naira, even more in some places. But with this CNG, it's a lot less. I've heard people talking about 250 Naira or thereabout. And depending on the cylinder you have in your vehicle, it could take you for quite a while. It may take you more than what a full tank may take you, or it may take you even less. It just depends on your cylinder. But what's important is that you end up spending less on refueling you know the car for example when you run out of gas to put back cng in the cylinder is going to be less than fueling your car especially over the long run now this is good and this will also help you conserve fuel but then it's not without its own drawbacks and what are the drawbacks of this cng first off you're going to occupy the boot space of a vehicle so no matter the vehicle you're using you're going to have to give up some boot space some people like to carry luggages in their vehicles. Some people like to keep things there. You know, for my own vehicles, you usually see some tools in it. So I would normally have to give up that space if I'm going to consider the CNG option. So it's important that you keep that in mind. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that you would lose some power. Of course, with the um, conversion, you would lose some power definitely because you're going to be running on another system that the car wasn't designed with. So even users of this CNG will tell you that, oh, the car has lost some power and in some cases, some torque. So it's important to note this while you plan to do this, you know, to follow this route towards saving petrol. We've also had reported cases of people complaining of their engines going out prematurely. You know, of course, the car wasn't designed with that um, technology so you're switching to something new so of course it's going to tell on the engine so you would expect that drawback the engine may not apart from losing power it may not last for as long as it should so these are some of the drawbacks that we've seen with cng that we've heard of i know you may have heard of some others it's prominent in some countries it's just um, starting to gain waves or starting to become popular in nigeria so maybe as time goes on we'll learn but with this option, I would usually advise, if it's possible, to get a manufactured CNG car. I mean, you don't have to convert your vehicle to CNG. If you can get one that was already built as CNG, 
it will obviously be a better option than doing the conversion. And then if you have to convert, if you have two or three cars, convert your, le your least valuable one because it, converting to CNG will make your car drop in value when you want to resale. So if you have three cars, look for the least value one, experiment with that and see what it gives you before you go ahead. So with your CNG, you have to keep this in mind. Like I said, the value of resale would usually drop when it's time to resale. So these are some of the drawbacks of the CNG that you have to keep in mind while you save cost on petrol. Electric cars. I said, I mentioned earlier that um, we are proud to be associated with Innocent. It's, um, it's an indigenous Nigerian company. They've rolled out the electric cars. I've not physically seen one. I can't wait to see one, see what it operates like, see what the components are like. Um, there's a lot of stories going around, but I want to see one physically to conclude. Usually, with electric cars, the, the, your, your completely eliminating the internally combo internal combustion engines. So your car is running on electric batteries strictly. Now, what's the benefit, the major advantage of this? First of all, like I mentioned, you won't have to buy petrol again. The second thing is that it's going to run cleaner. So emissions, you know, all the problems with emissions and um, internal combustion engines are eliminated. So you're going to be dealing with a clean vehicle especially according to the manufacturer so electric vehicles would also eliminate all the repairs and maintenance associated with your normal cars the ICE cars you know the internal combustion engine cars so when you're dealing with electric vehicles you're just going to be dealing with charging the batteries and then you can run you're not dealing with petrol again so it's a good switch if you look at it now what are some of the drawbacks of these electric vehicles first off is the purchase price. If you want to purchase an electric vehicle, it's going to be expensive. You know, if you even ask those that have bought, they will tell you that, oh, it's a whole lot, you know, more expensive than buying a regular vehicle. So electric vehicles will be more expensive. I've not looked at the prices Innocent is offering, but I'll tell you that it will usually be more expensive than the normal cars. If you're buying them, especially because you're buying them brand new. So I've spoken about the advantages, and then this is one of the disadvantages. Secondly, we have infrastructure problems currently with our electricity. So if you're buying an electric car, you have to keep in mind, you have to plan for how you're going to be getting it charged because it's going to have a driving range which will be limited. So you would need to get it charged so that it can serve you for the period of time you can use it. So if we have the charging points scattered all over the place, and if you can, it is possible to even have one in your house, then that would really make sense. So you can charge for a while. So you have to keep that in mind as you use or plan to switch to electric cars. Also would be the resale value. So if you're doing electric cars, any day you want to sell it, of course, people are going to price it less, you know, than it should really be. It's going to lose a lot of value once it becomes used. So you have to keep that in mind um, that it's going to lose value as you make that switch. Because if you're moving to electric cars, you shouldn't really be concerned too much about resale value because, yes, it's going to be lower. And um, we don't know. They will still be brand new. But in future, as they become more prominent, you, you'll, it will be expected to see some problems with technical know-how. But hopefully, we expect that um, it's going to be solid enough to serve for a while. And then we'll probably have warranties to cover these bits. So keep in mind some of these drawbacks as you go for the electric option. And then lastly is the hybrid option. The hybrids have been with us. Some brands have perfected the hybrids. I would say I've seen what Toyota has done over the years with the Priuses and even with the Corollas now. So they stand as probably number one with the hybrids. So we'd want to see even our indigenous companies push out more hybrids. Now with the hybrids, the interesting thing about the hybrids is that you're still going to use petrol. You're still going to use the internal uh, combustion engines, which we use. But now you have them work with hybrid batteries. You know, it's a hybrid system. So it's a combination of your normal traditional engine and then the hybrid system. And you're also going to be using the petrol and then the batteries. The hybrids have stayed for a very long time. So if I'm going to choose 
which of these options to go for at this moment i will go for the hybrid because it's well it's tested over time and then i don't have to do with filling up cylinders or looking for charging uh, points to charge the car and the good thing about the hybrids especially proven ones is that they can last for quite a long time you can go trouble free from brand new till 150 160 200 000 miles trouble free now i reviewed a hybrid last year i think it was a 2020 model i would attach the link to this video is a prius toyota prius and the guy just got it at the time and it was having i think 50 or 60 000 miles so after the review i mentioned that this that could still go with the state i saw it with the batteries and everything it could still go for close to 200 000 miles or 200 000 miles now because of these hybrid systems uh, the latest scan tool I got can actually read the hybrid batteries because that's where the problem starts from, when the hybrid batteries start falling apart. So you would need new batteries. And that's where the drawbacks come in for the hybrids. The batteries need replacement at some point and the batteries are not cheap. So if you're using a hybrid, it's advisable. Don't buy one that is too old or one that has racked up too many miles because it means that the batteries have also been used and may be on their way out. So that's a drawback. So with the hybrid cars, prepare for battery problems. The technical know-how for the overall vehicle is still quite limited. You know, not so many people can even read the batteries of the hybrid system currently. So you have to keep that in mind while purchasing the hybrid. But again, like I mentioned, they could go for a very long time. And that will be my ultimate pick if you want to switch from the regular petrol vehicles to the hybrid. So I would attach that link as I mentioned, and um, I believe I've given you a rundown of these three options. So I would like to hear your own opinions. Which one will you switch to? Which one will be best for you? Kindly notify in the comments. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment. Thank you.